Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and newcomers alike. Welcome to the stream. My name is Douglas, and today we're gonna be playing some more D Banner Saga, or rather, some more of the first part slash episode slash entry in the series. That is. Uh, three part long series with uh, have previously played part one through three as in we played this game for some time there's no actual division in parts but what I mean to say is that we is that we played um, for Three full streams and each stream is about four hours, so we've played 12 hours of this game. And I'm still quite unsure about how close or how far we are to the ending of the game. So it might be literally anywhere, I have no idea. <clears throat> I didn't mention that I have played this game before. Way back when this game released. So there is that. I have I actually do know how this this first part ends and more or less where it ends, but I I remember very little else of the way to the ending. So that's what's gonna happen here. We're gonna have to guess a little for a little bit about how long it will take for us to reach the ending. So this or next part is probably going to be the last. I don't think it'll be much longer than this. But anyway, let's get to the game. Ah, uh, would you look at that. For the first time ever, the game already showed up in the nice capture. And also, hello there, gaming guardians. Delicious Greg and friends. Welcome to the stream and thank you. So very much for that delicious host. We're gonna go and resume our playthrough with the Banner Saga for the fourth, for our fourth stream playing this game. I don't remember exactly where we stopped last time. I believe it was after we arrived in a city whose name I never, I can never remember. And then, because Ivan says that said that Juno was going to meet us in that city, she never did though. So we decided to pack up and leave. So we we're going to the next city over, whose name I also don't remember, but that's where the thing was last time. We were going to the next city over. And a lot of other things have happened during the way. But anyway. And Greg says offline hosting is one of the best hosting. What do you mean offline hosting? And also you love how I draw my ships according to the game. Oh, I, I, I think it's fitting. I think it's really fitting and it makes quite a lot of difference. But anyway, let's go back to the game. And see what's going to happen today in the amazing adventures of Rook and his big band of misfits. Just to recap, who do I have here with me is Sigbjorn, the guy we just rescued, which is like a repaint of Gunnolf, pretty much. It's almost the same character. Then we have Rook himself, the man of the hour. We have Ivor, Odleaf, Echo, and Nid. There's also Ivan, Kramer, and Alat here in the ranks. I think I'm gonna go and replace replace somebody with Ivan. Maybe Nid. Or Odleaf. Perhaps Odleaf. If I've been. 
Because last battle, a lot of my people were dying uh, because they have... The enemies were breaking my armor extremely fast and Ivan is the only character who can repair quote-unquote armor. So, there you go. You have a task to do, which is to help keep your friends alive for a little bit longer. Uh, Greg, you play this game. So, possibly your roost of characters from the first game is slightly different. And that's because, you know, I took certain decisions that made certain characters die off. Huh? So we arrived at this point with fewer characters than we could have, or maybe more characters. That's also a possibility. Anyway. Uh, Greg, you stopped streaming an hour ago, offline host. Well then. Then I agree with you, offline host is one of the best hostings. And thank you again so very much for that, and welcome. And also, Stat Hyena, hello there, welcome to the stream. And you choose Sam. You said. <clears throat> Sorry. Sam, you says. Teacher Douglas. We missed you yesterday. And how was I? Uh, I was good. I, it was, well, I was okay. Yesterday I intended to work on the comic, but. Twitch wasn't working out. Twitch, uh. It had some problems, like. Sidewide that a lot of people are not being able to connect to the stream and Because of that I couldn't stream yesterday Apparently they resolved the problem later on but but by then it was already, you know True three hours into the stream so they thought well, let's leave it for tomorrow But at least the, if you guys were expecting to come to my channel uh, and so now I think I, at least I threw in there uh, rerun of my Resident Evil 7 playthrough. So, hopefully, some of you enjoyed that. Anyway, uh, Greg, you said you monster. I'm not a monster, I'm just bad at deciding things. And you also said, but alas, you must sleep. Be well, doggy. Sure thing, I will. I'll, I'll try my best to be well. And you do too. Uh, stay good and have a lovely, awesome day, Greg. Or night? Well, you sleep during the day because you're a bad kind of like creature. So sleep well and have uh, lovely have lovely dreams. And I'll talk to you later. But anyway, let's get started with this game. Let's leave and keep marching. And Samuel was addicted to a poem during class yesterday. How does one addicts addicts to a poem? That is a thing I will never know. Ugh, what did I do? Sick Bjorn wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him slip off during... Slip off his drunken stupor on the ground and this morning he's paying the, he's paying the price. Uh, let's help him recover. Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrounge together for the moon Ival. When one offers steam mead, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, handing you his massive mad stein. Stein, stein, I don't Eventually, Sig Bjorn comes to you. I don't, I won't get into details, he says. I was supposed to bring those casks from Reinivik back to Boisgard. I drank maybe half by accident. Point is, Sig Bjorn continues, you don't tell anybody what happened and I won't tell anyone about the mead you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back on the travel. I got Bjorofu's blessing. Because it's true, we got to Reinevik, we helped him, we saved him. Uh, because of that, we got some supplies. Yunar, the quirky old man with the leather headband, says If there's one thing I know better than woman, it's mead. Uh, it's well. He smiles. Well, nothing. But I know when a group could use some help. Just not don't let old Yulnar make everything better, no question now. What even? What are you talking about? Yulnar's smile fades. I said no questions on what's the first thing you out of your mouth. 
He shakes his head and shouts, forget it, forget the lot of you. He storms off. He storms off and the next day there is no trace of his whereabouts. How weird. And Sam, uh, you keep repeating it and, make, and making similar ones. It's a poem by Carlos Drummond. I have no idea which one that is. But also, uh, hello there, Zach, and welcome to the stream. How are you doing this morning? <clears throat> Harsh words from one mother to another draw the attention of the entire caravan. My daughter marries Ragni, or no one. That reed thin tramp you call a daughter won't provide sons. The assaulted mother bears a thief ready to attack. Explain yourselves. With my default option for most problems in this game. Ragni chooses, chooses my daughter on his own, the insulted mother says. But this one thinks I have something to do with it. Launching forward, the first woman flails wildly, shouting, Liar! The women are separated and eventually calm down, but you worry that this is far from over. Well then. Now I have this to worry about. Sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation or our graves. Dog damn it, I missed the name of the chapter. It was this layer and this something something. Finally, you arrive at Boisgard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions and are littered with the bodies of dredge of our own men. Excuse the mess, shouts a voice from above the gates. Looking up, you spy a striking Varl, his face red, red, reated, red, reated, I don't know, with matted black hair, movement at the gate catches your eye. Dredger still banging on the gate doors. Without luck, let us in, you shout. Sigbjorn pushes past. I won't be hearing the end of this for a while, he says, before yelling. Open up, Bolverk. They dug me out of Reinevik. You hear a laugh echoing on the wind as the door creak. A dozen armed men led by the massive viral make quick work of the dredge and usher you into the city. <clears throat> Lovely. <laughs> You may be interested to know they brought a mender, says Sibjorn. You didn't go to get a mender, where's the meat? says Bulwark. <laughs> Massive Varl, even compared to even compared to other Varls. Sibjorn shrugs apologetic, apologetically. I guess the mender will do. Either we've got a chance now or we're completely screwed. I'm Rook. We've come a long ways. Some as far as the Skogar. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose. Listen, if you have something to tell him, say it now. Otherwise, you're on your own. <clears throat> I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you see me again. It won't be to talk. Mender, come along. We're going to see the governor. Bolverk and Sibjorn leave with Ivan, who goes willingly, signaling that he's fine. Fane, this is just like Frostvelar all over again. What happened at Frostvelar? Oh yeah, that happened at Frostvelar. This is nothing like Frostvelar. The one in Bearskin is probably leading. The one in Bearskin is probably leading the ravers, ravens. Ravens, is that good or bad? It depends on who they're working for. Hopefully it really is the governor and not someone trying to strong arm their way into his seat. <clears throat> I guess we wait for Ivan to tell us if he come back he if he comes back. I'm not worried about Ivan, I'm worried about the army of refugees we brought who don't belong here. You're probably right. Nobody ever uttered a nice thing about Boys Guard, so what now? We ought to go to the docks and see what our options are, in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? What guards? I have a feeling the ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down. 
and when Belwer gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking his stride. Let's just keep that for ourselves for now. So, the docks. To the docks we go. <clears throat> and Sam this says that the name of the poem is Stones in My Way or Stones in My Path. Would you like to hear it? Sure, why not? What is the delicious poem you have, young Sam? So there's many little bodies all over the place here. Uh, this is the sea of something something I already forgot. What do you guys have to offer us? Although, if I remember correctly, this is the end point of the game. So after this I'll have nothing else going on. So I'm not sure if I should be getting more supplies or what should I be getting, if I should not be getting anything at all. Wow, one right now gets one supply. Fuck you. God damn it. Okay, with 19 right now I can level up some level low level characters. Just Krimer, Odleaf and Alette. Whereas Ivor and Rook, they both cost, cost 20 renown to level up. <clears throat> All that. Well, let's go to the docks and see how this thing goes. When you get to the docks, you, your heart sinks. Not a long ship to be seen, aside from wrecks. Bodies floating in the water. Buildings are trashed and boarded up. What happened here? murmurs Alette. They're all gone, says, says Ivan, approaching alone. I see you had the same thought as me. More or less like it, yeah. Ivan, you're okay, <clears throat> says Alette. I'm fine, it wasn't a lie, the governor is here. He's in hiding. Why? Since the dredge started appearing... Blah, 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 I didn't... Uh, I misclick, sorry. Since the dredge appeared, blah, blah, blah. People can't live by food, food is scarce, the markets are bare, Boys guard is a fire keg waiting for someone to tip it over. So the governor is paying the ravens to protect him against his own people. And keep the pace, so to speak. It's more like a massacre anytime there's a hint of an uprising. Where does that leave us? I promise him the Mander's protection in Arborang. I don't think he's very popular there. <coughs> We're going to start tearing this place down and build new ships. We can ride the Orms, Orms uh, River all the way to the capital. Leaving another perfectly good city, city behind. How long will it take to build new ships? Hold on, what happens to the people living in Borisgard? It's the best I could do, Alette. He, he thought it could take as long as a month. We don't usually make ships of, out of scrap lumber. As soon as people figure out what's going on, there's going to be riots on the streets. A month? Why bother? Bellow will be here within the week, if not sooner. I'm open to su suggestions, says Ivind. Gods be damned. Is there no end to this? Ivor roars in frustration, leaving you standing by the docks. Let gives you a worried look before chasing after him. Ivind, what do we do about Bellow? Ivan says nothing for a moment. I don't know. <clears throat> well then. And also Neku says S M M M M M God. What? What do you mean, Neku? Oh no, so welcome to the stream. And Sam, let's go and read your poem. In the middle of the path there was a stone. There was a stone in the middle of the path. There was a stone. In the middle of the path was a stone. I'll never forget this happenstance. I don't know... Uh, ah, okay. On the life of my tired retinas, I'll never forget the, that in the middle of the path, there was a stone. There was a stone in the middle of the path. In the middle of the path, there was a stone.
Huh. Okay, um, hmm. I don't know what you say, Sam. But I guess one thing I could say I could say it's not like a cheer some a cheerful thing, but one thing I could say is that this poem is slightly <laughs> underwhelming. But who knows, the guy is well known, so go figure what what the what else he has done or maybe Or maybe there, it's one of those poems that people like keep analyzing for day, for ages and ages and ages, and keep thinking and reiterating on it, and that's how they discover new things about the psyche of the guy who wrote the poem decades ago. Even though people could simply go to him and ask him, "Why did you write this thing this way?" <laughs> But no, they would, they would much rather guess. But anyway. Sam, you don't know why, but you like this poem. Well, I don't know why either. It's not a very good poem. Or it is, and I'm just too... Too... Too uncultured to appreciate it fully, but... Anyway. Neko, you say you want to play this game later so you avoid spoilers, but we'll leave stream open with no sound to help you. So, see ye. So, ye. Well, uh... Shooting Neku. I guess. Uh, you can do that, but then there's the thing that this game has uh, multiple paths, ways, and, and things. <clears throat> so, even if you watch me play through this whole thing, there is still the possibility that when you get to play it yourself, you take sev severally, severely different. Uh, choices and will change a lot of the outcome of the things. But anyway, let's talk driver. You find Ivor standing on the city walls overlooking the fields outside. Dredge are keeping their distance but continue together. I'm okay, Rook. Ivor cuts you off before you can say anything. You know he's been through worse. Just feel like someone should cut us a break every now and then. If we want to be standing a month from now, we're going to have to be prepared. What did you have in mind? First off, our clansmen need a place to stay. They'll get torn to pieces out in the streets. I'll keep an eye on the dredge up here. If they break through the walls, we're done for, so we'll have to keep them back. Could always use a hand with that. We need to know who's controlling what. And make sure we get our cut. Food's going to be scarce. And when they start building those ships, we're going to have to keep people away. What a damn mess. I'll do what I can. Well then, good luck with that, Rook. It's not gonna be easy, I'll tell you that much. Ever explains, I'm leading attacks with Ivan every time the dredge gets too close to the gate. Listen, we're going to lose fighters and Varl every day like this. I don't need to tell you what happens if nobody is manning this wall. We could always use help. Consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of these tasks will likely take a full day. <clears throat> Let's find a safe place for the caravan. The entire caravan has spread out in the streets where they're attracting attention. We could look for a public house, suggests Alet, like Frostvela. You figure that if you made camp in the open, you could at least keep everyone together, or with people leaving the city recently, there might be abandoned houses you could squat in. <coughs> I <clears throat> I feel like it's better best we make camp in an open space. I mean, making camp is bad because we're always prone to being attacked and whatnot. But at least we're not taking anybody's space. They already have a lot of people in the public house and looking for abandoned houses, and it's never good. 
people will feel like we're totally invading. So let's make camping an open space. At least we're being the most respectful we can. I feel. We've done well sticking together before. We don't need to change things now. The caravan sets up a camp as normal and goes about their guard patrols as usual. Hopefully it keeps the people working together and in their element. And people died from fighting. God damn it. Ivor points out to the dredge along the wall. There's a lot more of them and we're forgoing and they're getting braver, he says. We lost a fair number of fighters since yesterday. We could use your help if there's nobody left to defend the walls. One of your clansmen from the caravan finds you. We have a problem, he says. Looters came around and scattered a bunch of people, raided some supplies, some wounded. Others we can't find. If you could find the time, he leaves. He leaves it there and runs back into town. Wow. You consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of these tasks will likely take a full day. Let's join Ivor in defending the walls for today, I feel. Or find a source for the supplies. Join Ivor, I guess. No supplies. I checked around, Old Leaf tells you, and nobody has food or the one part with it for a fair price, and our medicine has been gone for days. They're either gouging the prices or it's just plain gone. She doesn't say it, but you can tell this is going to be a serious problem. Track down the ravens and see what they know. <clears throat> you find the massive leader of the ravens along the dock, where they're doing their best to keep a growing number of people in check while the boat, boats are being constructed. You question him about food supplies. Should have brought your own, he says. I can't go giving it out to every person in guard. I'd kill every last bastard in the city for some good meat, though. This place has been dry for weeks. Um, offer the mead you picked up in uh, Rhinevik. Sure, why not? Let me get this straight, says Bulver. You happen to come through Rhinevik with CBR and tell I'm plenty of mad to go around, is that right? You hesitate a little longer. A little too long. How murder that motherless yox grows Bulver. As he turns to leave the... As he turns to leave, he grumbles, bring the barrels and we'll make a trade. The caravan protests when you tell them the deal you made, but when you return with more supplies than you expected, the complaints vanish. Um, possibly... Bulwark and the other guy. See Bjorn, or kinda... Mm. Anyway, uh, Sam, you said that this poem is historically important. Carlos Drummond was a great Brazilian writer. Uh, what was the historical importance of this uh, poem, Sam? Tell us a little bit more about it, because I can't see why. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, how are you guys doing today? Every single one of you. Hopefully you guys are doing good. I hope you guys are doing good. Let me know how you guys are doing. It is a lovely Friday morning so far, and things are good over here with me, and I hope and I hope that over there with you too. This is bad, says Ivy, as Ivor points across the battlefield. Aside from the fact that we are up our necks in dredge, a stone singer showed up. We've been losing warriors left and right. If we don't deal with it, the wall will come down by the end of the day. Dad, there's a riot at the docks. A light runs up to, the, to you out of breath. They're trying to smash up the boats. When you calm her down, she says the ravens are there, but she worried that things could, things could get out of hand. <clears throat> Let's join Ivor in defending the walls. 
The stone singer is going to wreak havoc on us if we don't take care of it, Ivor tells you. This will be a rough fight, but we've got to take you down. You ready? You prepare yourself. <clears throat> and battle we go to. Huh, somebody is missing. I think Sibjorn is missing. Well then. So, there we go. Gun of Rook, Ivor, Need, Ekil, and Ivan. Those of us. Strength resist. And that is interesting. To say the least. So gun of you're using the twenty percent dodge strength plus two strength. And Ivan you're using the will and armor per turn. Echo you're Wearing nothing. Whereas you could be using the bloodshed coins. Need, you're also wearing nothing. I mean, you are wearing something. The plus two break. So you're the breaker. <coughs> gotcha. Whenever you're, ha you're wearing the obsidian ring, it gives you plus two, two strength. That's good. Rook, you're also a breaker, so there's that. Um, battle we go to. Let's see how this will go. Very poorly, probably. And Zach, you're playing a PS1 classic, Legend of Mana. Oh, nice. Are you playing it on the PS1, or like I asked, is there a remastered version of it? Because I really don't remember. Oh, battle time. I forgot. How lovely it is to battle in this game. Let's do that. So this is the Stone Singer. This guy sucks. Balls. Because if somebody attacks him uh, in melee range, they get disease and they start losing uh, strength per turn. And apparently, if you have adjacent uh, units, it also transfers to, to them. It really sucks to have everybody uh, grouped up in a single place. This will have to do. Let's go. <laughs> and Sam, you're doing good. There's a science fair in your school, so you're free to watch me. Oh, lovely. But wouldn't you enjoy it more if you were to be watching the science fair itself? Tempest. Let's uh, attack up to three enemies in a spin twin attack. That dealt a lot of damage to all these characters, which is amazing. So, you're not very complicated, but you're gonna pose kind of a problem if we leave you <clears throat> alone for too long. I'm already gonna go and make sure you don't do that. Oh, come on, don't go about summoning your little friends. God damn it.
So the gist of her is that she can strike from very far away. So you are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She can reach you with her bird of prey. Not gonna do a whole lot of damage though. Or will it? I don't know. I don't think it will. Because I have nine armor. God damn it. She can hit you though. It will be more delicious. You are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Away. So you go there, Nid, and you bird of prey the shit out of this guy. Yeah, only one strength. Not a whole lot, but I can do with that. Could be much worse, honestly. Got the... No, don't want that. I want this right now. Ivind, you're up. What can you do to help with this precariously precarious situation? You could mend armor of our friends, or you could do a lot of damage to this guy from very far away. Both are interesting, interesting ideas, but perhaps mending Gunnoff's armor is best right now. So Gunnoff, your maximum armor is 9? God, God damn, I thought it was more. Anyway, sure. Three. Well then. Well, are all of them going to summon new friends? Is that, is that the gist of it? to summon a friend. It sucks. But I'm sure we'll be able to deal with that. Ivor, your battering room just knocks back their targets and does armor break damage. Oh. That is useful, but not currently. Need what sort of fun little things can you do? Well, you can attack him. It's true, far. Instead, you can always go and... Oh, let's think about it. Uh, Sam, you said that now you've watched it a bunch of times. This year, this year you're gonna relax more. And you'll be right back. Sure thing, Sam. Be good. You have 9 strength and this guy has then 8 armor, so this is the guy for you to go and do some damage to, so go and do that.
Huh. Oh, the stone singer he was he mended. I mean he recovered health for a lot of these 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 do the rules. So that's what he does. Gotcha. Oh that sucks. Ivan, you can go and attack this guy then. Otherwise, he's gonna prove a nuisance. Very, very, very soon. Gonna help you do your tempest again. Like it or not, it's one of the best things you do is do your spring tree and attack. And Rook. What can you do? Fine. So you can kill that guy immediately, or you can reduce this guy's as a strength. And this guy is like ridiculously strong. So reducing his strength is always a good idea. It stops him from doing too much damage next time yep there goes Ivor is now sick you bastard Ivan, you're up, and you can either kill this guy or you can heal Ivor. Both are interesting choices, but I feel like uh, healing our Ivor's armor or Ned's armor are the best choices right now. No, the next turn is this guy. And maybe kill him, even though the enemy will take a turn now. Oh, maybe that wasn't the best idea ever. But at least look at that, Gunnoff can go and kill this guy. There you go, Gunnoff. Well, RIP need. Pillage time! Ow. And somehow we only ended up with one wounded character, which is actually good for the kind of battle we, we were dealing with. A very kind of harsh battle and with a... with a... <clears throat> was a slightly harsh battle and they managed to summon reinforcements. Despite all that, we completed the battle with just one injury. And it was probably more due to bad positioning. And look at that, the background, the foreground is already littered with uh, dredge now. Look at the, how much dredge there is in this mountain range. And I feel like this big dredge guy here is the Bellower. 
<clears throat> so things are going down. And also, on the flip side, we can we have enough renown now, now to promote one of these delicious dudes. So either Rook or Ivor. Ivor, I feel like you can get a promotion. There you go. So what can you do better now? What will you be able to do better now? I feel like you could have a little bit more strength. And exertion. Exertion is like a the wild card stat. Sometimes it's useless, sometimes it's the most important thing to have. But now the great news is that you can equip something better. This gives you plus two strength. Whereas I have this that gives you plus three strength, or this that gives you one strength and knock, knocks packs, or this gives armor but makes sure that everybody goes after you. So maybe this one that gives you one more point of strength. And then we clear up this obsidian ring for somebody else. And I Sam your bark. And the poem was important because when it was published, it caused a lot of a lot of uh, well, it was polemical because of its interpretations and because a lot of people considered it monotonous and boring. And others, uh, the work of a genius. The poem is like a little representation of, of life with obstacles, being that the stones and how we never forget the obstacles in our lives. Also is the part in which it speaks of how even though they're tired and exhausted, we still remember our life problems. Hmm. For being redundant, a lot of things it weird. However, this is the only redundancy that attracts so much criticism and love to the poem. Well, I had never heard that poem before, that's for sure. Not sure what to make out of it, though. Well. We have 15 days worth of supplies, we have a lot of people, we have great morale, but shit are going down, the, the, the dredge are coming and our ship is nowhere, our ships are nowhere near being done. This morning, says Ivor, I saw him, Bellower's here. I think he won't be long now. Ivy leaned silently on his staff nearby. You consider what you want to do now, knowing that any of these tasks, tasks will likely take a full day. Maybe we should go back and keep defending the wall, or we can do these other things. Such as help looking for the missing caravan people, or investigate the riots down by the docks. Or help defend the wall, since Bellor is so close. It's all dang dangly close now. Hmm. Choices, choices. Let's try and help him defend the walls again. I'll be honest with you, Ivor says. There's too many of them. We're just delaying the inevitable at this point. You catch his eye. Still got to try, you say. Oh, well, one day passed by, so Need has had time to recover. Alright, I think this works ish. And Sam, you say that just for sharing it, it already makes you happy. All them, I'm, I'm happy for you. Wow, holy dangaroo, look at this. 
All right, we have how many are those? Four, six, eight, nine dredge here. This is gonna be tricky. Okay, so Gunnolf, you can do your spin tree attack, but everybody's so f spread apart from one another that your spin tree will probably not work, so you best be there. Either you'll be there, if let these closer by dudes come to you. Rook and Ekyu, you guys stay there. I mean, Ekyu, you stay there. And have this formation, more or less. So accurate providing armor to all of these. If by some weird ha happenstance they manage to close in on you guys. It won't happen, but who knows? Who knows really? Okay, gun off you can already go in for go for broke and do some heavy damage. One individual single guy, or you can let them come to you. <clears throat> Maybe that is a wiser tactic after all, waiting for them to come. Because I could move Ivor all the way down there. <clears throat> but that is reckless. Very reckless. So maybe I'm just better off. Pick him them out from afar. And while we could start trying to use exertion to do a little bit more damage, I feel like it's best we wait. Let's not use our exertion right away. Ivan, you can do some 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 serious damage with your arc lighting up to six styles away. We can't reach this guy here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, if you go all the way here, you can. So you do that. I don't know if he can reach you, but if he can, Dangaroo, that's gonna be bad. Off. You can take down two in a single s s fell swoop. Ah, dodge. Lovely. Rook, you can take this guy down. Already. Them in need, you were in the wrong place. Well, 
Gandalf is already almost dying, but he'll be able to take his spin tree attack and do a little bit of damage. Not as much as I'd like though, but he will be able to do some. Oh, look at you, dodging the lines. Ah, oh, you bastard. And these enemies though, they're not even joking, they're, they are not here to play. They showed up and they are already doing strength damage, they don't even care to play at doing You don't even care about trying to do some... What's it called? Armor damage. They just wanna... Wanna go for that delicious... Strength damage. Okay, Rook, is that you? There we go there. Make sure that stone McGuffin can get too close. RIP need Perhaps it's fate, you're not supposed to stay alive at the end of this Oh, would you look at that For the first time in forever, they are in a, in a Diagonal pattern, that's so I can keep I can really fuck these guys up so I'm gonna deal 4 points of damage to him, which is gonna make this guy take 5 damage and this guy is gonna take 6 damage. So that's gonna be a lot of damage for all of them. So this is incredibly powerful, but the problem is it never lines up. Because as it happens, it's extremely hard to make sure your opponents will stand in a perfect diagonal line in the diagonal formation and connect it. It's really impossible to get them to to, to stop in that formation. But if you can, holy damn, you can do some damage. Okay, <clears throat> another day passed by, we have 19 renown now, another fight and we can promote somebody. Ever, you begin. Can we really keep this up? Ever looks like he hasn't slept for days, he grants something unintel unintelligible. The weight of the situation is crashing. Then from far in the distance you hear a horn. Dredge don't use horns. The curse to you, Ivan appears at your side just as, just as a long caravan of people coming to view. Dredge turning to attack them. Who is that, you ask? It can't be, says Ivind. He runs, he runs towards the gate, shouting, You see their banner? It's Hakon! As you wonder how they got here, the gates are heaved open, and you charge onto the field, clearing a path through the dredge. Is this a battle again? Oh, look at that, it is. So, Need, as good as you are, you've been... You fell in combat quite too much, so you need to be replaced by either Odleaf or Let. Let's go with Odleaf. Go with a Let. Odleaf, a Let Crummer. <laughs> What's your guess, Crummer?
I can command people from afar, which is always nice ish. Well, at least you can trap tiles and then let you can try the needle. All of which are interesting, but all of them are so situational that it never happens. Like, literally, never happens. So, Kramer, in you go. Do you have a trinket you can use? I would feel much better if we went to battle with a trinket. Although we don't have any. So no trinket. No trinket for you. And I need to promote these guys. Start give, uh, handing out promotions like it's candy. Because everybody's low level. I right? will well, we'll need a full party for the ending. End conflict. Here we go again. Here we go again. This guy has a shitload of armor, so we need to kill him. Wear down his armor quickly. This guy, though, has a lot of strength. And he can summon an ally. So we need to take him down quickly, too. So... Kromer and Ivory, you guys are there. Delicious uh, gun of you stay there. With Rook, midways, because Rook has a lot of damage, of break damage uh, stats. And Ivan, you're there mostly because I don't know what to do with you. So there it goes. Once again. We will wait for them to come to us. So, there you go, Gano. Just stay there. Rook, you can already start wearing down somebody's his armor. If you get ridiculously close. So, you can't do much from where you are. You are going to have to get close. Which always sucks because look at these people, they're so grouped in together. But also, uh, hello there Oni, welcome to the stream, how are you doing today? We're playing some more Banner Saga today. Trying to get the Incredibles Adventures of Rook and his Band of Misfits going on for a day longer. So 4 damage to you. There you go. Alright. Ivor. You can already down one of these guys or take down this guy's strength and he has a lot of that so maybe that's more important right now taking down this guy's a strength so he won't pose that much a problem anymore any longer right there okay Echo, your turn. What will you do? Yeah. Ivind, you can use your incredible powers to the good. Or evil. Or bamboozlement. But I would very much appreciate if you were to go and help mend Ivers' armor.
Should have. Oh, look at that. She's summoning friends. Time to take him down. With your help, Rook. Break his armor. Ivor, you will need all that exertion of yours to pull this through. Pull this off, by the And you did! Hooray! Well, you're not very smart, are you? You're gonna die because of the... Okay, you were gonna die for the damage. Lucky for you, though, I decided to move you. As for you, no more armor for you. Ow. Okay. Who is going to bite the dust now? No, not you, not ever you. God damn it. Okay, you because why not? You don't only have true string anyway. Might as well be done with you. Ow. And Gnoof. All those delicious battle of attrition that this game keeps providing us with. And they're never ending, really. Pillage time! Okay, that's not gonna help you in anything, so don't even bother. Ivan, can you do it? Can you. And you take him down while you can. Wow, look at Ivan! Doing this stabby kill, melee kill. And there we go, some renown. Which is delicious. What's this? Hmm. Anyway, uh, Oni, you said that your bones ache. What is that, Oni? Uh, what have you been doing with your canine self to make your bones ache? Juno, says Ivan. I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Ivan, says Juno. She smiles and they embrace. Ivan is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry, I couldn't make your cigar home. I ran into problems. Problems is putting it lightly. There's a mile wide canyon practically, splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, dredge are practically feeling falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore, they're everywhere. We notice, says Ivor. Let's just you made it all alive, Ingvar. I take the others didn't. Hackens become quiet, and he motions toward Juno. She got across somehow. Found her out cold for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can get right now. Bellower is here. Gods be damned. I thought I was free of the menace. I will deal with Bellower, says Juno. Come on, no need, no need to tempt him by standing out here. No need indeed. Hakonza's caravan enters the city, fighting, out wa fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To your relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in Boris Guard. Aha! Hakon joins you on the wall with his personal bodyguard, Mogur. 
Do you discuss what to do next? I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing at you. I'm sorry, Ivan, you must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. He takes everything within Ivan's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days, maybe less if you're quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. Where? Why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses and something shifts in your vision. For just a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've been already and you have already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. Can't find a word to argue. Weirdly enough. What is this? You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar grounds behind Juno. You are alone, aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing an enorm towards an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. So these are all dredge. This is a nerdstone. Well, what do you know it is? Well, what's up? I don't even know anymore. Oni, you said you are an old boy, you can't keep up with you youngsters. Well, welcome to the club, Oni. We are at the Godstone of Stravs. You know, they, they're known for making violins. You glance nervously around, but the dredge didn't seem to hear her. It's okay, you can speak. Softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? <laughs> Says Rook. Juno smiles. What could have come across as profoundly creepy look is, looks sincere instead. No, the dredge cannot see us. Somehow. To be more precise, they can't see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Who are you? I wish we'd had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I'm one. I'm on the Mender Council. You've met Ivan, my apprentice. I have indeed. How are you doing these things? Controlling minds? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right. Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to the Loom Mother first creations. <clears throat> given to the Loom Mothers as first creations. We are called Volca. I believe I am the only one who can influence another's mind. Then why not take control of Bellwer? I learned the talent to heal mind, not control them, though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Bellwer is the difference between convincing a child to cheat to sit still and telling a starving beast be a bear the low is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear bear to stop being hungry the truth is we're rarely a match for the thunder anymore our advantage is that we can train more volka it is also our weaknesses our weakness the volka pass on and lose their knowledge while the thunder simply go rolled older and more powerful Bellor is both immortal and beyond my influence. Trip point. Then how do we stop him? <clears throat> the God of Secrets will play a part, as will you. So what are we doing out here? Do you know of the God Straps? Few know this stone exists, even among those who have lived their whole lives in Boy's Guard. While Dr Dangler deals in fortune, Straps taught men the value of trade in a different way. He showed them it has consequence. Two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone. The gales up here wear away the stone, but the metal remains. We need a piece of the silver. The god Straves is wrapped by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded those weapons to the gods. These weapons to the gods. And they use them to kill each other. 
Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The menders call him god, the god of secrets. He was both. Why are we surrounded by dredge, then? They seem to be drawn to the godstone. There are many things we don't know about Strauss. Maybe they see him as a patron. Or is it an attraction they cannot explain? Does Strauss have something to do with that serpent in Einertoft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicions. But until I have had time at the Mender libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge is always... It always seems as though we know little. Imagine how the rest of us feel then. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they think to be. Why did you pick me then? Why didn't you take Ivan or Hakon? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Ivan must keep Osgard from falling while we are away. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us make it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at the boys' guard. You were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to a lad, no matter what. Well, let's get what we need and go then. Indeed, you will need to dislodge at least a fist fistful of the metal. We will forge it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, after everything you've told me. Make a magic arrow to shoot Bellower, that's all it takes. Why didn't you do that, that a long time ago? Juno gets a far away look in her eyes. No, that is not all it takes. What I tell you must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Bellower, even where it is to strike his heart. It has no physical weaknesses, but it will still sound doubt in his mind. When he pierces him, I will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone who fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to trick him into thinking he is dead. That is the most insane. He really can't be killed. No. Someday he will awaken and he realize he's not dead. I imagine he will be quite upset. First we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop, so be careful. Well then. Approaching the back of the stone, you start to climb, looking for a loose piece of the silver vein. Even without looking all out onto the dredge, you can feel each sinister face watching you closely, held back only by Juno's influence. Panic races through your blood. Try to quickly wrench out the nearest chunk, climb higher where it may be easier to remove, or go back and tell Juno you can do it. Let's uh, climb higher. As you climb, you can't help but notice the stony mask masks of the dredge line up before the godstone, like worshippers before an idol. Just a glimpse nearly immobilizes you. Your hand rests on a piece of silver that comes away easily. The dredge do not react. Look for another piece. While you're here, you glance quickly around to see if there's any more low-hanging fruit. You are able to pry away another, smaller piece of silver ore before your nerves give out. You nimbly descend to where Juno is waiting. Well done, she says. As you walk back through the, dead, through the dredge, their heads turn in unison to follow. The dread that lingers and the shaking in your hands does not subside for hours. And we got it, they are chewing for the godstone Stravis. Stravis Whetstone. You approach the gate of Boy's guard again, relieved that they are still standing. It looks like, like they took a beating while you were gone. A lad rushes to your side and throws her arms around you once you've crept through the gates. Juno smiles at the reunion and tells you, take this time with your daughter. Find a smith who can fashion an arrow from that silver. I have other things to which I must attend, but meet me on the walls when you are done.
Let's go to the crafters, then. It takes a while, but you finally find someone willing to craft an arrow for you. He eyes you suspiciously when you show him the silver, but shakes his head and gets started. I let watch as the smith fire reflecting in his distant stare. And Oni, you say you, Frank Z, Z and your soul is oh my dog. Well then. I talked with Ivy in a long time while you were gone. He told me a lot about Juno. Is she really as powerful as she says? As he said. It certainly seems that way. That might be the most luck we've had so far. Dad, I think I know what's going to happen now. An arrow. She's going to make shoot Bellower, isn't she? I don't know for sure. Come on, who else is gonna do it? Ivor? Alad, I know where this is going. You're afraid of me dying. This isn't like before. We can't run this time. That's not what I... Let me do it. What? Why not? Because you think I'll get hurt. What do you do when Bellower comes straight for the person holding the only thing that can destroy him? Let me speak. Let me speak. Everything's changed. Skogar feels so long ago. Precisely 155 days ago. I'm not asking because I'm afraid of losing you. I'm not, I'm not afraid of anything anymore. Let me do it, because you know I am a better shot. I have a better chance of puncturing his armor. We only have one shot. I'm not a child anymore. I'm just not some girl. I'm your daughter. I can do this. For once, let me decide what happens to me. So this is the, the, the turning point of this game. One of the biggest decisions that matters. Is who shoots the arrow? Rook or Alet? And I really don't know. I really don't know who I want to shoot this arrow. Because this is a big moment here. You guys will see why later. God damn it, who will get to shoot the arrow? Rook or a lad? Okay, last time I had... Last time I had... A lad shoot the arrow. Because she came to me so earnestly... And saying things like, I'm not a girl anymore, let me, let me decide for once what happens to me, it's my destiny, yada yada yada. Let me decide how I live my life, and I said, oh, well then, you seem like a grown girl, you don't seem well, to know what you want, so sure, go and do, go for broke. But this time though, maybe I'll do it otherwise, I'm gonna be the one who shoots the arrow. Whereas you are that. You get to sit back. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I let no. She stares into the firelight. <clears throat> you wait for the tears to come to her eyes, but they never do. Just promise. Promise we'll be together. You sit by her side silently until she smith until the smith finishes his work. And Oni is said, "You're not a girl anymore because your pin is away from being a dude." Well then, if you say so. So these are all the heroes I have, Rook and Alette and these other guys, who joined us from the other caravan 
which happened to be Eric, <laughs> somehow he made it, Mogir and Gris and Hekon, they're all here with us. Those delicious man dudes. What's this? Strav's whetstone, 20% critical chance. So Hakon has this thing that gives him armor. Mogur has the one will and Gris has the one will per rest. Eh, not amazing, but sure, why not? Let's go back and now let's go to the delicious Juno. Tell me about the things. There he is. Juno is in the middle of an animated debate as you approach the arrow in your hand. There is little time left. Beller knows we're here. Whether he is waiting for more of his forces to arrive or simply wants to serve us out, first I cannot tell. But he will not expect a direct, a direct attack. Is this a joke? How are you going to do that? It will take a handful of warriors to face him. I can keep a small group hidden from sight. The rest of you will lead to charge from here. With luck, Beller will send his armies away from himself to meet you. What about the ravens? They may protest. They will not. I've arranged a task for them. Even if you make it to Beller, what chances is there of defeating him? We saw what happened at Einertoft. That thing cannot be killed. Juno shows them the arrow he had forged from the Godstone Silver. This will make him bleed like the rest of us. Once he is pierced, he will be vulnerable. She looks you in the eyes. We only have one. Do not miss. And bring only those who you will absolutely need. It will take all my concentration to keep the other dredge from swallowing us up. I cannot join a battle. And if we kill Belwer, then what? The dredge will just wander away. That is my belief, yes. I can't say for certain. This is a doomed plan. Help us hold out here until the ships are finished. And then what? Belwer will hound our every step, all the way to Arborang, while I'm certain more Sunder awaits. Now is the time to speak to loved ones and the memory of any god that pleases you. Rest. In the morning, we slay a Sunder. Dog damn. <clears throat> so this is it, everybody, the final battle. This is how it will go and we'll need all our might to go face Bellower. And there's as so much as I'd like, there's nothing else to do here. All I can do here is maybe remind, remember, try and keep track of all the characters I have, buy trinkets at the store or supplies, but neither will work troll for me or check the map and look around the region and see what's what look how long we've come though <clears throat> Hakon and friends came all the way from Strand, all the way up here, and they did this more or less gigantic turn here. Whereas Rook and his big band of misfits left from Skogir, passed through Frostvelar, then doubled around at Worm Toad. They went to Einertoft? Did they? They did, yes. Then they came here to Sigur Home, but they went around through Hawkstorp, and then they went down to Sigur Home. Finally, then they passed through Reinvik, and then finally to Boisgarn. Whereas Hakon and his group of friends left Strand, went all through the, the way through Vendorfell, then Skleed, then Ridgehorn, then they doubled back to Grovenheim. 
and then we never saw each other again until just now where everybody's reunited for the final battle uh, against the dreaded uh, Belware who's right there just waiting for us Are you guys ready for the last battle of this game? I know I am. Hope you guys are too. Let's face the Belwar and let's finish this adventure. The silence is what you remember. You rise in silence and walk through empty streets. Upon the wall, two armies stand quietly watching each other. Your footsteps echo on the wooden floorboards as you approach Juno. She breaks the silence. It's time, Juno says. Gather your allies. Today one thing will end, another will begin, and our actions will decide on which side we stand. So this is it. Rook, Alette, and everybody else who is absolutely needed. So let's take Ivor with us, Ivan, Gunnolf. And who else? I'm thinking Hakon. <clears throat> Echo is fun because it grants uh, armor bonus to people who are nearby him. But there's so very little of that going on. So I'm thinking Hakon. Let's adjust the turn order. So first Gunnok actually. Then Rook. Then Ivor. Then Olet. Then Hakon, then Ivan. Gun of Rook, Ivor, Alert, Hakon, Ivan. That's the turn order for these dude the rules. So, Alet, you're the lowest level character here, so let's promote you. <clears throat> Higher stats. So now I get to do more. I have more armor and more exertion. You need to kill one more enemy before it can be promoted again and, and use those big boy trinkets. Hakon, you can also be promoted. You are a war master. What does what does that mean? The character hits even harder than an average warrior with no chance to miss. He can wreak havoc with an additional plus one strength and also adds one break damage to the target plus bonuses to heavy impact. Which is this. Southern impact is best used when carefully positioned to impact as many enemies around the target as possible in a single strike. Let's promote him. We have one more exertion and one more strength. And that will do it. So Alette, you're still using this, Alette's bracelet, which is the most OP item to begin the game with. You get one more armor, one more strength, and one more willpower. <coughs> but now Hakon can use level 5 items. Too bad there's none that is, that is good. Nonetheless, everybody's using the best items they can already. Hakon, do you need more armor? Yes, you do need more armor. Gunnolf, you could also use more armor though. I don't know what you are doing with this plus strength item that you have. However, you too have more strength. But you, you, you do get to use the strength, so it's all good. So, okay, everybody's ready. I think everybody has good enough items, good enough skills, good enough everything. And do we have enough? No, we don't have enough now to promote Rook. So both Rook and Alad are the only rank 4 characters I have going on with me into this battle. To kill a Sunder. Let's do this. And hopefully... What's this? Oh, it's the option menu. Okay. I am ready for battle, I think. Let's try and get this going. 
Oh, there we are. Okay, here is Juno. She's kind of creepy. Do you fear? Listen, I will try to guide you. She managed to guide guide us around uh, the city, Boys Guard. We came all the way up here to the mountain where the where the apparently the the dredge has built this nice boss fight arena for us for us to fight on, and here we are. There's lot, lots of lovely dredge Piperinos here Who we will fight against Two ranged Three ranged uh, small dredge uh, One melee small dredge One defensive big dredge Another strong arm big dredge And Bellower himself, look at this So I don't know what what is the gist with this boss fight? Like, if the best idea is for us to try and kill as many as possible, if the idea is for us to try and... What we should do. Because if I'm not mistaken, if I keep killing these dudes, he will keep spawning more dredge. There is a gimmick here. There is a gimmick in this in this battle here. I don't remember what the gimmick is, but I do know there is a gimmick. Okay, this is my crazy lineup. Not the most functional thing, but it will hopefully prove useful when facing off against these big threats that are every one of these enemies. Okay, let's go. We are ready. Kind of as expected, you can already rush in and you will heavy damage that guy, but then the next turn is Bellowers. And in fact, I know what he's gonna do with us. So I'm gonna go there already and do some damage. Hold it. Oh, you whore! You already do strength and armor damage just from us being close to you. Oh, that is so fucking OP. Okay, so my abilities are the Mark Prey and the Silver Arrow. Pierce Bellower, only possible and chance to hit is 100%. So you can down from now already. But I have to reduce Bellower's armor. Be quick, I cannot hold them back for long. Okay, Juno, I got it. I have to be quick about it. Okay, Ivor, you go in there and push him back. Push him back, Arino. Stunned. Is that a thing? Come on. Come the feck on, game. Okay, what else can you do? Sundering impact. Okay, so you just move there. Don't wait. Really? Keep Bellower weakened. His strength will return. Oh, Juno, it's not as easy. Keep talking, but you do know it's not that easy. I've been a uh, man. Half, up to half of Mender's current will power, so half of eleven is six. I don't know how much uh, Everest's 
Armor is six will do. Okay, six is good. Yeah, five also works. Uh, Gunnolf. Kill him before he can summon out Al Alice. You break his armor, that so will make it easier to kill in the future. Hello there, follower. Gosh, dang it. You cannot use the arrow until there is no chance of missing. Okay, I got it. Someone really doesn't want <laughs> wants me to not get it. I don't know if you notice it though, but there's a shitload of enemies in here. So, Juno, you know, it's more complicated than you might think. Actually. I'm glad, just getting there. You can't hit Balor, but at least you can pack up this guy here. What can you do? You can fact this guy up, which is lovely. So please do. Okay, now our chances are bad. Bellow will regain his strength. Keep on him. Okay, so he will do that. Okay, actually. Let's uh, do our best then. To stop this that little that little man whore from I'm getting back. And Oni, uh, you are a dredge. Fear you. Fear you with capital F. Can't do that. No, god damn it. Dad, no. As the holder of the silver arrow falls, so does any hope of defeating Balor. Everything you've worked for so hard, gone in an instant. I know, right? God damn it. You have failed. But <laughs> we'll. What do you want to do? Let's return to the last checkpoint, why not? Oh, so fucking unfair. So, Rook cannot die at all in combat, and as it so happens, Bellor has 20 points of strength, and Rook has half of that for both armor and strength, so Bellor can easily one hit kill him anytime. So, that's annoying. Anyway, this old dog says press F, F to pay respects. That indeed. And also, hello there, this old dog. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? And Zach is a final boss fights are so intense. Intense and unfair. Bad, bad, bad. It's time, says Juno. Okay, Juno, let's go. Oh, come on, I have to micromanage everything again. For fact's sake. <coughs> Ivor, Ivan, Gunnolf, Hakon. Gunnolf goes first. Actually, Alette goes first. Then Gunnolf, then Rook, then Ivor, then Ivan, then Hakon. Why at first? Because she can hit people from afar. Just. Second. Okay, we need armor break. You already have as much armor break as you can have. It sucks. So go with uh, strength and armor. I don't know what they gave you last time, but that works. So back it. Hakon, you get to be promoted. Congratulations, you are a higher class Duduru now, which allows you to do a little bit more strength damage and exert yourself a little bit more. Careful not to throw your back. Or do I want exertion? Oh sure, why not? Of course I do. And um, trinkets, I didn't change my trinkets at all, so this will do. I hope. 
Oxygen ring, what do you have? Look. Farting yard. Okay, sure, that does it. Let's try this again, but now knowing that Beller can one hit kill Rook at will. And if he does, it's game over, no matter what I did. And nobody can then go to Rook's body and pick up the item. The arrows. Rook, you stay a little bit back then. Ivan, you stay there and let... Let you get as close as possible. Otherwise, this is gonna be done really fast. Holy shit, too fast. For my liking. Okay, I guess this is good. Let's go. Battle! Alet. Never mind. All sense of security and hope. Just get in there and fucking break his armor. Okay, so he does recover armor per turn, so... The best I can do is... Get this done as quickly as possible. kind of bad because I have too few turns to get this whole thing going Beller weaken, his strength will return. Each time is his turn, he recovers one point of strength and one of armor, it would seem. So Yeah, I have to keep him weakened as much as possible. No, don't attack Root, you factor. Okay, I'll let kill him. Wait, what? Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that, she can be promoted now. Mid fight. Okay, Bellor, stay the fuck back. Gigantic effects. Stop attacking Rook. So we all know what this means. Ivan, you have to stay there. All the way in the front. You're not at all a combat suited character, but if you don't stay in front of Bellower, there's a chance that Bellower will get you fuck up Rook in the anus, and we don't want that. Certainly do not want that. So you get in there. Pretty sure that that won't happen. And you don't even think about so many friends. He must break through his armor, I know. He wouldn't guess. He could not at all. 
fathom what I'm trying to do. Oh, this must feel wonderful in everybody's ears. I just know it. Oh, come on. Seriously. Ah, you fucker. Steal your courage. You only you need only you need only slay Balor. Okay, so what is the range for the silver arrow? It's incredibly short. Would you look at that? It's between two and five tiles. So one, two, three, four, five. Brooks needs to be in one of these spots, both of which are extremely preca precarious for him to stand upon. And look at that, he can't do it. And I already moved him, so there's a chance Rook can die in any turn now. Because he's extremely far, close to these pips. Too bad Bellar has no armor anymore. Or too good, should I say. Uh, Ivan. Delicious Ivan. Once again. What will you do with your current life? Also, hello there, Tiger. You said, oh man, that looks like a ball stretch. It is. It's the bellower. He bellows. And he's annoying as fuck. And if I'm not careful enough, he will kill Rook. Which is a thing we don't want. So to ensure that that doesn't happen, we are going to make sure Rook stays fucking alive. Rook, by the way, what is your maximum armor? 10. Okay, so let's mend you a little bit. Oh, hello, new friend. All right. So Hakon, you can you could either kill him, but back him. Actually, it's best we do that. Go ahead. Okay, so that moves up Bellwer's turn, so that no, Bellwer can go and do that to fuckery. Which is so delicious, by the way. Everybody loves when the Bellwer starts doing the fuckery. So fun. So fucking fun. No, wait, I left. What the fuck? You don't need that much. Just two points of damage. His armor is enough. What are you gonna do? Okay, RP Ivind. It was nice meeting you. Not enough root power. What the fuck? Of course we have enough root power. Don't kill Rook, please don't. Yes. Keep the archer safe, says Durr. Okay, now Rook can use the fucking silver arrow, so do it, Rook. Use the silver arrow and make him vulnerable once and for all. No, Dad, please help him! Cries out a lad. Hey, haste, child, finish Bellower now! So now we get to face Bellower again, except that now wounded Bellower will retaliate immediately when struck. Oh. Okay. 
So that is the gist now. We have to fate, face everybody again. Let's focus on this character that so he doesn't summon friends. Those delicious friends who I hate dearly. A letter gets to go first, so there you go. Then gone off. Uh, would, you, would, you, would you look at that? Ivind fell in combat, so he's injured, so now he has minus two strength. Ah, oh, damn, so. <laughs> oh, delicious. So dog damn delicious. Okay, so. Lots of things are happening, none of which are, you know, particularly delicious. And would you look at that? I don't know if I even can mend Gunnolf. I hope he can. Yes, he can. Look at that. Awesome. Well then. RP <laughs> Ivan. And Oni says, choke me daddy. No. Not at all, Oni. We will, you will not get to be choked. Not today. Now would you look at this? You're not as strong. End it is now. I wish I could. Uh, so what you're doing? Wounded allies explode and strain damage to us. Choose an enemy or dismounting your lowers ally iron ar allies armor but sharply raises the strength. What are you doing though? I can't tell. You are doing something though. But no matter, now it's a let's turn. What can you do, a let? You can't attack anybody from where you are, so you're gonna have to move. How about you move here? Ish. Ah, uh, fuck him up. In the butt. Lovely. Hello, Bellor. Oh, Bellor. Already abusing poor Gunnel. I wonder, will power... Yes, it will. Okay, but... God damn. God... Dog damn. Beller is... OP. And he recovers armor each turn, so... I have to do some... Serious... Amount of damage to him. In a very short amount of time. Which is not gonna be the not gonna be nice to do. So what did you do? Okay, you lowered everybody's armor, but you raised everybody's defense. Oh, you are so delicious. Mm, I'm sure your friends love you. Which is bad in a way now that I think about it. That means they have more life as well. Okay, Bellor, please don't kill that. Wow. Oh, delicious, we decided to go for Ivory instead. I support the decision. Wait, what? Oh, you get to act twice because the fucking Valor. Every time I struck you, you get to retaliate immediately. Oh, I see how it is with you. Okay, Violet, it was nice meeting you. So there is an important. Oh, each time I strike Bellower, it gets to be his turn, so these guys are never ever gonna do anything ever again. Okay, exert yourself and do as much damage as you can. Fucking Bellower. We need, we need to kill him. Now, if possible. Uh, there we go. Ivor, you get to, to, you get to do the final blow. How fitting. <coughs> you got one renown for killing a thunder. Sure. That sounds fitting. And everybody's dead. <laughs> How lovely. Mm. 
Damn it, Rook. Not you too. Dad, get up. Get up. Help me. Where are the menders? Hush, child. Look at me. It's been too long. Put up your hood. You are alive and we must go. You are only barely aware of the surrounding chaos as Dredge flee from viral warriors who push their advantage. A let become someone else today. There is time to be a let another day. I will carry your father back to the city. He will be honored properly. I promise you that. Come on. Well, Rook is dead. Juno was right. With Bellower following the dredge, flee the field of battle. You return to Boris Guard, but have almost no memory of doing so. Aside from the image of your father's still body being carried in Ivers' ar Ivers' Ivers' arm arms. Ugh, what a complicated sentence. Now look at that! I only got one renown for killing Asunder. This game does not know how to reward you. <coughs> and also, Wolf Morning Grace, welcome to the stream. And uh, Tiger says, "Good job, Doug." Thank you, Tiger. <laughs> Took quite quite a lot, but we did it. And Grease says, "Rook is dead." Yes, he is. So that's the thing I was talking about before, when we crafted the silver arrow, the only arrow that could, that could uh, that could make uh, the Bellor mortal, quote unquote, again. Uh. When we were making that silver arrow, that one silver arrow, a lad came up to me, to Rook, and said, Hey dad, let me shoot this arrow, I will be able to. You know I'm a better shot than you and I will be able to make it. So I had a choice of not letting a lad shoot the arrow and instead shoot it myself, or I had the option of letting a lad shoot the arrow and be like, okay, you're a grown... You're, you're a woman now, you're no longer a child. I believe that you can do it. So that was the choice. Get to choose who shoots the arrow and whoever shot the arrow. During this battle, they shot the arrow that wounded the Bellower, and the Bellower got so angry and mad that he went to the person who shot the arrow and crushed them. So that's what he did. He grabbed up... Uh, he grabbed up Rook and crush him pretty much he did the choking and as it happens <laughs> Rook needed, needed both his lungs intact to be able to keep breathing however that didn't happen he's dead RIP Rook RIP forever though <clears throat> And Grizz, how did he die? That's how he died. Uh, however, it could have been Alet. It could have been Alet who died. Or Rook. So, one of these two had to die. So, I decided... I don't know, it, it just felt like this time... Like, Alet should be the one who carries forward the tradition of seeing the story of the well, you know humankind and our clan and into the into the banner she is the one who's been doing that and I feel like she should keep doing that even after we after everything is done however now she won't have a father anymore but at least our family lineage can continue and only says no it's not done you have to fight to fight the super secret boss and op optional boss wow Let's get to that then. Agria says, so either lose Rook or lose Alet. But Alet can only do long range. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, character wise, it's. it's Rook is, has better uh, attributes in battle. He is a much better character in battle. However. Uh, However, story-wise, I feel like the reasons for letting a let a l letting a let stay alive are more compelling. But anyway, Rook was a close and long-range fighter. Uh, yeah, he was indeed. But I don't know. Let's go. So we should have the time we need to finish the ships. Says finishes saying saying Ivind. 
I think you're right, the dredge don't seem interested in us anymore. Since Belwer fell, they've been going their own way. The ravens have been keeping the docks clear, Juno's talking to them about something now. When those longships are ready, we'll be able to sail all the way to Arborang. With luck, before the darkness show up here. How far south has it spread? I couldn't say. Hopefully not far. Hakon has already decided to come with us. There's not much else to go back to, truly. You true look up the true look up as you approach. Alette, it's nearly time. Soon we'll be ready to leave Boys Guard. Find somewhere safe. One ship is done already, at the docks. I had it prepare I had prepared it for Rook. I don't think you can do this, says Alette. Come Alette, it's time to honor your father. There you have it! <clears throat> A deliciously came from Stoic Studios. Thanks Alex, Arnie and John for this delicious game. Uh, music by Austin Wintry, like I said. One of the best composers ever. Mm, of this decade at least. Well, this was very intense for an ending. Uh, Grizz asked Hyver to lose an arm. Yes, he did. The first time the Bellower showed up, um, nobody knew what 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 was up with it, but everybody was like, "Okay, this is the Bellower. He's showing up. He's very dangerous," and people decided to go against him. But as it happened, uh, Ivor tried to face the Bellower, but the Bellower ended up taking I Ivor's arm, as it happens. When you try to face the Bellower, because the, the idea of the Bellower is that he's immortal. He doesn't die, so... Heck, we know how that happened. Anyway, 
Uh, Zach says another game where the protagonist dies. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it could have been Alette who died. The first time I played this game, I did not know about that decision with the arrows. So when Alette came to me like, Dad, I'm not a girl anymore. I'm a grown woman. I can take care of myself. Let me... Let me shoot the arrow. I'm a better shot than you anyways. And I said, sure, why not? Of course you can't do that. You are a grown woman after all. <coughs> and then I said, okay, Alette can go shoot the arrow. <clears throat> and then she did, and the Bellower killed her, and we're like, oh no! Now, however, I knew that ahead of time, so that's kinda... Eh. It's never good to play these games when you know what your choices are gonna affect. But it could have been worse. And Grizzly said that that looked like the spirit realm. Kinda of did, didn't it? I don't know what's up with that, actually. <clears throat> and on you said, Hainer, Pence, Halet. Ah, oh, that Kingdom Hearts true throwback. But anyway, like I had said, I <clears throat> I played this game back in 2014. And I was incredibly delighted with everything this game had to offer and show and and I love this game so very much oh there's so many people named Aaron oh the heck so many Aarons in the world but anyway um, <clears throat> I played this game all the way back in 2014 when it released but I played it kind of just like, eh, this game sounds, looks nice, it, it, it is interesting, I'm kind of looking for a nice tactics game. And I ended up playing this game and I discovered that this game not only has a nice in a tactics combat, but it also has a very endearing and good story. Like, ridiculously good. <laughs> so, I played this game and I saw this and I was like, what? This is it? And that was it. For two years until suddenly and randomly, uh, Stoic Studio released Banner Saga 2. So when I played this game, I never really it, this ending. It just seemed like okay, that's how the story goes. <clears throat> they are not being pursued by the dragon more, but they are gonna have to fend off for themselves. And. I wasn't expecting a sequel, but then, lo and behold, a sequel appeared. And, and I tried to play it for a little bit, but with the with the how hectic my life has been has had been in the last uh, many years, I have <clears throat> I have not had time to play this game thoroughly. So I played a little bit of the second, but I didn't get to finish it. And now, luckily, we will get to. Here on the stream, we'll get to see the how the second game goes and how it how it begins, how it goes, and how it ends. But then there is also the third game that released just recently, I think a couple weeks ago. They uh, released Banner Saga 3, which not only is a sequel to the sequel, but is also the last game in the series. So, there's not gonna be any more Banner Saga after that one. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I am, I am, ex I'm both ready and excited to keep going with this delicious uh, Banner Saga adventure. And play some more Banner Saga and get to do more crazy stuff in the future. I don't know how how much you guys like or dislike this idea but oh would you look at that bones with the surprise with the surprise cheer 999 bits or 999 which is also a delicious DS game which now has been ported to the PCs 
Zero Escape 999. But also, hello there, Bones. Welcome to the stream. And you say that it's over. It is over indeed. Um, it is time for us to either sit through these many, this gigantic list of Kickstarter backers, or go do something else with our lives. But yeah. I'm gonna go and play Banner Saga 2 and then Banner Saga 3 and I hope you guys enjoyed how this, seri this series goes as we marathon through this one but also uh, thank you so very much for the for the for the 999 bits bones and welcome to the stream welcome to the end of the stream by the way and Tiger says, gotta know what happens. We gotta do. We gotta know what happens indeed. Because the first time I played this game, like I said, it was years ago, and then the sequel came out, I tried to play it. It was two years later, I already didn't remember half the story, half the characters, half the hap happenstances. So much, so very much. And I had completely forgot about this whole thing of the gigantic serpent. I had forgotten about this darkness that is coming. I had forgot all about this. So now it's time for us to go to the second game. Banner Saga 2. <laughs> and see what goes on with that one. And only you say bleep. Blap, I don't know. An anger, big, big man. Oh. Oh gosh dang it, Oni. Don't overexert yourself. <clears throat> and Grizz asks you're ending the stream. I think I might actually. Because it is incredibly uh incredibly timely. It's eleven twenty two over here in the uh it's eleven twenty two over here, so I was thinking Maybe one thing we could do, maybe it's not a good thing to do, but one thing we could do is end this stream right now, go to the delicious act of making lunch for me, and then I was thinking of coming back after lunch and stream, do a impromptu evening afternoon stream. What do you guys think about that? We can start playing Banner Saga 2 now, for several more hours. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are up for that though. Yeah, oh, I can't scroll through this myself. So, my, I know my name is not in here, so I'm not even gonna bother to look. Uh, uh, look at these many names. By the way, whenever you're writing uh, books, comics, or whatever, look up the credit section of in literally anything, and you can have come up with nice ideas for names like William, 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 or maybe William. Or, I don't know, Shemesis. There's many delicious creative names for you guys to go and take for yourselves. If you are in need of names for your work, whatever it is that it is. And that's it. But, the Banner Saga, the first game, is over. And I hope you guys enjoyed this delicious adventure. And I got two achievements, delicious. And um, bye bye, Rook, you're not alive anymore. I repeat for you. Oh, what an adventure! What is heraldry? Thanks to the Kickstarter backers for the crest designs. Oh, yeah, I can cr you can go and create your own banner here. You can go and choose a, choose a nice banner of literally anything. There's a thousand of little things in here. Let's go with animals. Perhaps there's dogs in here. And well, I guess the game kind of cracked for a little bit there. Froze. Okay, now it's back. So there's animal-esque things going on here, like this angry, angry sun munching doggo. And other sorts of doggos, true, I believe. And I don't know what's up with this, but you can look up banners for some reason. That is a, that is a feature. 
But anyway, uh, so yeah, this is the end of the stream. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go cook some lunch for myself. Then I'm gonna eat said lunch that I have cooked for myself. And then I'll be back in about uh, several hours for another stream. Where we will be starting Banner Saga 2. Look at here, here in the corner, you guys can see it really. But we have Banner Saga 2. And we're gonna be playing that. And I hope you guys enjoy it. However, this is, was a ridiculously short stream considering how we went. And I hope you guys are not, don't have teary eyes as I do after watching that ending. Because it was heartbreaking. To see Rook die and everybody be like, no, Rook, god damn it. But alas, that has happened. But anyway, this is it for right now. I'll be back later, like I said, with more uh, Banner Saga. And I hope to see you guys here next time, which is going to be in about a few hours from now. So you guys can, as always, check uh, follow me on twitter and discord to get a heads up of when this stream starts and then we're gonna start uh the banner saga 2 the bannery hope to see you guys there and other than that take care and stay awesome you lovely peperinos or stay lo lovely and awesome for at least you know a few hours and i'll be back later Goodbye. <laughs>